Um, I can remember him coming to the training ground at Notch County when he wanted to sign us in his famous like, light brown leather jacket um, and I was only too pleased to sign so yeah come back uh, down to Watford to, to the Greyhound track um, momentous day um, and so so pleased I signed at that time. And what was he like as a manager? We've seen him on the pitch and cajoling players. What was he like you in the dressing room? Um, just a very, very great man. Um, obviously, looking back in hindsight, uh, just a tremendous manager and someone that I always wanted to play for. And he seemed like a guy that was obviously keen on you doing well as players, but really interested in you and caring for you as people as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It wasn't just what you could do on the pitch, it was also your attitude off the pitch and it was always, it was always teaching you lessons in life and hopefully um, I still was in good stead as, as, as we got older. And your, your fondest memory of GT, can you look back? <laughs> there's, Probably a few. There's, there's so, so many. Um, I think just, just looking back, it's just a privilege to sign for a man. I can remember going back when he signed us. I thought at the time, if I can hold on to his shirt tails, that this man was going somewhere and hopefully I could go with him. And that's what happened. Excellent. Thank you. Next to you is uh, our FA Cup final captain, Les Taylor is here. And let's cross our friend signing from the box with Dickie. And what were his powers of persuasion like to to move here? Uh, to be fair, it was a bit of a no-brainer. Um, at the time, there was two clubs interested in signing me. One was Chesterfield and the other one was Watford. Uh, at the time, Watford were in the uh, low league position in the second division. Uh, but it was a step up for me and uh, signed for Watford. And within about four or five years, uh, as a footballer, I achieved any like schoolboy dream I had. Uh, playing in the top division, Runners up to Liverpool, playing in Europe, and then FA Cup final. So I achieved everything I wanted to do at this club. And one of those famous places for growing, leading out, you and the players at Wembley in the FA Cup final, looks so proud. How proud did you make you feel as players on that day as well? Fantastic, you know, and then obviously, sadly, it showed uh, us walking out of Wembley, and everybody asked me, you know, where's your hair gone? Uh, they all <laughs> have a look at the big, uh, you know, like the big bonnet that I've got on top of my head. Um, but it was a, it was a great day and uh, great memories of Watford, and uh, it'll be with me forever. Great, thank you very much. Let's take it, everybody. I'm um, delighted to say that we are joined firstly by Nick Wright and Alan Smart. Yeah, we'd, we'd come down with a young Carlisle side. Um, we were struggling at the bottom of Division 2. Watford were looking for promotion. And to be fair, we played Watford off the park that day. Well, I think we did, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I, th I, think, I think we both did OK. But um, we actually lost 2-0, um, but didn't deserve to. And the memory I have was after leaving the pitch, um, Graham was outside our away dressing room, made a point of shaking hands with every Carlisle player, saying that you didn't deserve to lose, we were lucky, and I, th I think that said a massive amount about the man. You can't have a great year and not talk about that final. When you walked out that day, you just was so calm and collected, proud to be there. Was that very much the attitude behind the scenes as well? I think so. I think, I think we were all very confident. I think what he did, he, he brought a lot of average players, uh, good attitudes, effort and commitment um, and he knew how to manage us and he would get that dressing room going today, I think he's needing lifted and I think that was the, the key. He's a spirited man, he would like to miss a second half and he would go with a bit of passion, it would be nice to see a bit of passion 
and that's what you brought to the, the club, and I think the people can relate to that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us, Nick Price and Adam Smart. I'd like to say now that we have Tommy Mooney with us. Tommy. with him obviously here at Watford big part of your career but also he offered you your first contract at Aston Villa so you, uh, you must feel like you owe a lot an awful lot um, he gave me my first contract like you say at Aston Villa and I learned a little part of what he was like I was on the periphery of the team but when he came back to Watford I was a little concerned he'd got rid of me once I didn't want him to get rid of me again but we had a couple of fantastic years and I thoroughly enjoyed my time with the boss all right, thanks, Tom. I think we have one final guest now. Back over to the So I call it the Awards the Summit Sun, with the Mr. Luke Graham Taylor, to me, and I think I did say it once or twice, I mean, he was really like a father to me, and a lot of people do say that, but Graham, the first time I met him, I was what, 18 years old, and the first few words he said to me gave me so much confidence and belief that I could achieve, and go on and achieve what I did, and it was all down to him, and I mean, we stand here now in this, what is a fantastic stadium, and again, would we all be here if it wasn't for Graham Taylor? I mean, just as a football manager, but then you've got to look at him, but as a man, as a man, really is one of the best and greatest people I've ever, ever met, and I do owe everything in my life to Graham Taylor. Are we talking about that? Do you think that's the time Yeah, well, we, well, there's been a lot of reflecting on that over the last little while, and maybe we hear John Watson talking about it today, and thanks, John, I think he is here as well. Yes. John, about me uh, getting cramp, and Graham actually stand up and says, you don't get cramp at this club, and I think, um, <laughs> And that's something that I think I'll never ever forget because I played a game in the reserve the night before and then played that and I remember it happened down in that far corner and I went for the ball and I just went down and cracked both legs locked up like two rods of iron and he got up and I heard him shouting but I soon got over it. <laughs> Bit more crap as well. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have to